Okay. Uh, we talked a lot about Range Mapper. I think everyone was super jazzed about it. Um, and then talked about, you know, uh, I think Adrian did a great job of showing how it can be applied to mammals. I think then, uh, like Don was really excited about thinking about using it for diatoms, I think, and then we got way deep into it, talking about all these other groups. Um, the challenge in that case is how do you do that sort of pre-work um, that Adrian did to get the pollen sums or get, you know, get diatom sums that got into these questions about like calculated tables, where they might live. Is it something that we would do sort of like a one-off for diatoms and then we do the work for each of these things? Or is it something that the database itself uh, can have these pre-calculated tables? In that case, there are harmonization, like we have to agree on harmonizations and clearly define how those harmonizations are done. Whether, you know, uh, in, in the, in the range mapper case, it's sort of uh, summing everything within a genus, but maybe that doesn't make sense for certain taxa, whatever that is. Um, and then and potentially saying, maybe we have some for like taxonomic groupings and some for functional groupings, something like that. Uh, we talked about uh, just generally improving the extent of surface sample records within Neotoma um, for pollen, for other things, getting, getting more of those. And then uh, the importance of, for example, pre-settlement, uh, pre-Euro-American settlement records in North America, um, and, uh, and potentially extending the use of keywords within records um, to make those kinds of things more easily discoverable. Uh, when we then got to the two things, um, so ex expanding range mapper to other groups really was uh, the most of our time focused. And then this idea of, you know, can we, uh, and I think this came up in the taxonomy stuff as well, um, are there ways to start managing the harmonization tables um, or like, ecological grouping tables and stuff to make searches by percentages a bit more robust within Neotoma um, and a bit clearer. So, and then, and more surface samples. So that's, I'm gonna stop and someone else, group two. Did, did I miss anything? Sorry, uh, Dawn, Dan, Adrian, Nora. All right, okay, group two, I think was, was that, Buzz, was that you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tomas Sokoro Sokor and my, myself. Um, cool. Yes. So I will share the slide here. Uh, yeah. So we had two main sort of discussion points, uh, both kind of uh, revolving around the sort of change in the structure of the Neotoma R package from Neotoma to Neotoma 2. Um, with this idea of saying it'd be more helpful to have uh, just even more workshops, vignettes to discuss data cleaning, visualization, and kind of the, the use and access of various data sets, as well as, uh, so one thing that Neotoma has been great about has been uh, creating these sort of lecture plans, uh, classroom plans for the use of Explorer. Uh, it would also be really cool to see that as a sort of basics for R, basics of R for Neotoma 2, and have that kind of uh, set up as almost like a, a coding skills class for almost like an upper division undergraduate level class where you're doing many of the same explore uh, oriented uh, class projects, but in the Neotoma 2, in the Neotoma 2 R package. Um, and I I could see that being helpful for both uh, teaching at undergraduate level as well as for package users to get a firmer understanding of tidyverse because I, I think a lot of people that use the Neotoma 2 R package are still used to the uh, base R sort of structure of Neotoma and uh, might just not have the background in tidyverse that a lot of new R coders are uh, showing. And then uh, just riffing on one thing that uh, Simon, your group brought up, 
uh, regarding surface samples, um, it'd be really helpful to also have a way to know when the surface sample is from. Because especially if we're taking the top centimeter uh, and calling it a surface sample, we're talking surface sample spanning a, a, was in some cases a century or more. Um, and so it could be helpful to understand when the surface sample is from because thinking forward as people might try to take uh, surface samples and compare them to um, remote sensing data, there might be a fire or other land use or anything that would completely change uh, how we compare surface samples to uh, observed data, um, not to mention massive change in CO2 during this surface sample period. And then group three, I think it was Matthew, Dave, Jessica. Does, does one of you want to present? Uh, Dave, did you want to present or did you want to? Oh, you're, you're muted. Sorry, no, if, if you wouldn't mind doing it, Jessica. I'm trying to write something right at the moment, so. I can do it if you, that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, Matthew. Okay, I'll just share my screen. Okay, am I sharing the right screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, we talked about some things that actually overlap with what the previous group just mentioned, and uh, particularly is the use of um, training around the use of Neotoma 2 and the differences uh, uh, with Neotoma 1. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to have a workshop around that, and especially how to uh, drag data from Neotoma using R and how to process this data and the things, the functionality of Neotoma 2, like the capability and uh, because we are familiar with what Neotoma 1 can do and then uh, a lot of people are not familiar with what Neotoma 2 can do. So it's been nice to have a workshop regarding the capabilities of uh, Neotoma 2 package. And we also discussed an uh, issue uh, surrounding uh, the downloading of Neotoma data through Telia. So currently, when you when you attempt to download like polling data sets through Telia, you get this uh, notification that your API something or your browser is outdated. So and even if you sort of update your browser like multiple times, you get getting the same thing. And Jessica mentioned that something that uh, it's a known issue in the working to get around that as well. And we also talk about how uh, the idea of incorporating uh, much more um, robust OSHACOR data sets that can be used for paleoclimate uh, reconstruction and better ca calibration data sets into uh, Neotoma. And then we, uh, some of the key things we also mentioned is uh, integrating Paleofire to Neotoma, uh, which was already discussed on Monday, but uh, we also talked about in, in the context of the, the Asia and the Pacific region, uh, uh, getting in contact with some key Paleofire database player over there in order to sort out uh, different terminologies for charcoal record. And also, we talked about how the, the polling uh, community within the Neotoma have been doing some really interesting work using polling records to do global reconstructions or regional reconstructions and how the Tasty Tamerba group house group are also <clears throat> trying to also now moving towards that direction. And this is something that has been <clears throat> visualized for different uh paleocological data set within the Neotoma community like to be nice to see also other non-polling uh paleocological proxies to start also you know doing <clears throat> some work uh, around regional and continental scale paleocological reconstruction and we also 
uh, discussed how it's interesting to see how uh, we are now sort of not only using Neotoma data to, you know, within not only using the existing data in the context of Neotoma only, but also uh, relating this data set to other uh, databases as uh, shown in the Austrate data that I presented initially. It's nice to see how Neotoma database can also be used in other contexts. And Jack also mentioned that it's really nice to have an idea or have more idea on how we can better improve the community to help people to actually use Neotoma data in other contexts because it's, it, it's only possible to have all the databases in the world integrated into Neotoma, but it would be nice to be able to like to enhance the functionality, things like that, that would enable people to actually use it much more efficient uh, in the context of like uh, in relation to other databases. And um, uh, we also uh, discussed about how uh, it would be nice to have like a page within the Neotoma website where people would share how they've been using Neotoma in teaching or like educational activities so that uh, uh, others can also tap from this idea on how they can use Neotoma in the classroom or for, for grad supervisions and, and so on and so forth. And, um, and lastly, we discussed some of the uh, pitfall that could also be in the fact that uh, some people might use the Neotoma data without having uh, a good understanding of what of how this data actually works, so that um, it would be nice, even though you are, you know, drawing data from from Neotoma, to also have to also have an expert that have a good understanding of this data uh, in your, like in your research or in that particular project. Someone who who understand how uh, this data has been created and how to better interpret this data. Yeah, I think that's all. I'm not sure if I've left anything. Uh, I don't know if Jessica wants to add anything or Jack. Yeah. Thanks, Matthew. I think that's a great summary for our group. And, and as Jessica commented in the in the chats, I think one nice thing about this breakout exercise is some there are some very common themes, uh, really focusing on things like surface sample calibration and educational, you know, thinking about both kind of like training ourselves and our students to do the advanced work, but then also you know, the more introductory to intermediate levels and pooling those resources too. So some really good cross-cutting um, themes here. Um, so, okay, I think we're moving towards close and just kind of a reminder about where we go next. So there'll be one more session this evening on the same same topic. Um, and then we will have kind of a, finding, a final closing synthesis plenary tomorrow to kind of, you know, kind of, you know, and I think for all of us reflect on I, for me personally, I'll just say, I think this has been a great exercise. I've learned a lot. I think this has been some really good dialogue and, and cross exchange of ideas. So let's start to try to extract what we think are the key takeaways for us to move forward with as we go into summer planning and summer writing and, and everything else. So, okay. All right. Thanks for your time and thoughts. Have a great rest of the day and see many of you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Bye.